I'm Bruce from Boring Organ History on Facebook. I've been doing boring research for about a year. Um, I think I read Dan's book about a year ago, and that's what inspired it, because it had a lot of great information, but I wanted to learn more. So I've been researching and researching, and it's been a lot of fun. So today I'm going to tell you a story from 1905. It took place in um, T.M. Allison's Opera House, behind T.M. Allison's Saloon. It wasn't really an opera house, it was a dance hall, but that's what they called it. It all started when Free Coldwell came to town in 1905. Within two months, he was known as the town pest, because he was always fighting with people, uh, intimidating people, and he claimed he was a prize fighter. He wasn't a prize fighter, as far as I can tell. I've looked in the boxing records, the name's not there. I looked in the census records, the name's not there. So. I don't know who he was, but he wasn't a boxer. Um, the Oregonian article described him as redheaded, arms like a gorilla, but the heart of a snail. It also said the punts of an infant. So the born residents got sick of him after a couple months, you know, bothering everyone, becoming a nuisance. And they decided to get to have a real boxing match. And so they got a guy who was training in Portland named Tommy Burns. And they set up a ring, and, you know, there was boxing ra never a boxing match out here before, so they had to make a ring, and they described it as too small to hold two infants. And, <laughs> and Tommy Burns, um, the real boxer that came out, said he was afraid he was going to fall through the floor. <laughs> yeah. And so they had the real, real fight, and when Free Coldwell saw Tommy Burns, he said, oh, I could beat a whole Clackamas County of Tommy Burns but he couldn't. So uh, foreign residents gave him, all, gave him uh, one rule, one rule of Tom Burns. You can beat him up as much as you want, but you cannot kill him. We don't want to pay to bury him. <laughs> <laughs> that much hasn't changed. <laughs> and he kept his word. He, didn't, he did not murder Free Coldwell. He even let him knock him down twice to try to let him feel like it was a real fight. Uh, it went five rounds. And in the fourth round, that's when Tommy Burns punched Free Coldwell in the nose and made him bleed. And I think that's when Free Coldwell realized he was in a real fight and he was in trouble. So in the fifth round, the first time Tommy Burns punched him in the stomach, he freaked out and said, that's not fair, you can't punch a man in the stomach, and just left. Wouldn't get in the ring again. And they waited and waited, it wouldn't come back, so Tommy Burns was declared the winner. And then they had a dance, because it was a dance hall, they had a dance that night, and everyone was happy to finally be rid of Free Coldwell. And as far as I know, they did get rid of him, because I never found anything else about him. Um, a really cool thing I found out about it that wasn't in that article, because it couldn't be, because it happened a year later, Tommy Burns, the following year, became the world heavyweight champion of boxing, a title he held for two whole years. Out of Portland? He's not out of Portland, but he was trained in Portland at the time. Okay. Yeah, he was actually, I believe, a Canadian fellow. So, and that's my story. Um, I found some pictures of him, because he was a famous boxer. I got a picture of the referee, because they mentioned him. And a picture of the building I think it happened in. I'll be posting that along with this on the Facebook group. Any questions? I believe it happened in the Opera House because in the article they refer to it as in a building that um, was used as a dance hall and that's how they described the Opera House, other place I've read it. And it was right around um, where the Grange is today, slightly this way and that way, like northwest of it. There was T.M. Allison's <coughs> saloon and behind it the Opera House had a wooden uh, sidewalk leading in between the two. Um, that building got torn down in 22. The saloon burned in 1909 when uh, it became a dry county out here. So he and Allison, who ran the place, just left and it burned down while he was gone. There, if you click in um, albums, then I have stuff in like, I have a Heidi's thing where I have a bunch of stuff on Heidi's. 
Uh, Moran, the postmaster, I have a bunch of stuff on him. And McCall's store, because that's been around a long, long time. So I have, He's got a picture of Bill Boring and his wife. Yeah, yeah, yeah I got that from uh, um, that Real People from 1980 when Real People came to town. They put that on Amazon. You can watch that episode. It's so cool. Seeing them walk around town and telling them, you know, yawning because it's so funny. That's called boring. <laughs> Just on Facebook, search for boring Oregon history. Okay. Yeah. Yep, that's all right. Thank you.